In one paddock, the highways, a family of eight Asian elephants are enjoying breakfast. And after breakfast, it's playtime. But one member of the family isn't getting involved. Tai, a 37-year-old mum and the head of the herd, is heavily pregnant. Tai is um, by far the most important elephant we've got here at Chester Zoo. She's been the breeding female here for many, many years. Um, she's kind of the centre of, of the nucleus of that herd, which is all made up of um, Tai's offspring. Tai is something of a super mum, having had eight previous calves. We've got Satami, which is her daughter, and then Sundar, which is her granddaughter. And they've also got calves of their own. And one of our youngest calf in Dali is actually Tai's great granddaughter. She's definitely, you know, the leader of that family, and um, they all turn to her for, uh, for guidance and uh, comfort as well. But with this pregnancy, Tai is entering a situation never seen before. Elephant pregnancies are the longest of any mammal, lasting an average of 22 months. But even by elephant standards, Tai's baby is very late. Keepers believe she's now a full two months overdue. We are starting to get a little bit concerned now with the situation with Tai. She's, she's gone you know, quite a bit past her due date. And you do get some gestations that are longer than others, and obviously Tai's had quite a few calves in the past, which does sometimes change the, you know, the biology of, of how these things work. So, but now it, it's kind of pushing on. And at 37, Tai is clearly feeling the effects of being an older mum. As long as Ty's been at the zoo, she's kind of shown these arthritic symptoms, so she has some pain in her joints, particularly in her front legs. You can only really speculate how this might have happened, but originally she was from Burma, Myanmar, and she was from a logging camp. She could have had an injury at some point to actually affect her joints. When we get to these late stages, you're talking about an 80 kilo calf when it's born, so she's dragging a lot of extra weight around with her, and you can see that the way she's moving around the paddock at the moment. She is struggling a little bit more. It's mid-morning. Get one, Tai Tai. Tai has arrived for her daily hydrotherapy session. Here we go. To help relieve her stiff joints. She's currently off her usual anti-arthritis medication because of the pregnancy. So these sessions are more welcome than ever. She's like a beach ball, isn't she? Yeah. No, she's... It's sometimes a, more of a diamond shape, but she's quite round. She's she? quite round. It's kind of round. At eight weeks overdue, the risks for Ty and her unborn calf are growing every day. All keepers of all animals are worry about the births, whether it's an egg hatching or an elephant coming out. You know, we're all, we all worry about it, and that's what keeps us awake at night. I think. I mean, with Ty, you've got the added complication, if you like, of, of, of her not being in prime physical condition. So there's an extra worry involved in that, because it is dragging and dragging and dragging now. Um, so we worry a bit more about her. Good girl, Ty. Well done. We want the baby out, because it is stressful. And we know it's a, it's, it's a very precious animal. We're a little bit tense at the moment, because it's, it's right at the end. Hopefully, right at the end. As evening draws in, pregnant mum Tai is looking increasingly uncomfortable. The calf that she's been carrying for so long still hasn't arrived. Before they turn in for the night, the keepers want to check Ty's weight, which they hope will give them an indication of what's going on. That way, sweet pea. Could just be an extremely long pregnancy. She's hitting, by our calculations, somewhere around 700 days. And that um, is late. That, that's, especially for her, you know, we, you'd expect her to have had the calf by now. 
if she was to lose the calf or, or, the, or the pregnancy wasn't to continue, weight loss would be part of that. Three, four, seventy. She's lost a little bit of weight. She's lost 100 kilos. It's not a massive amount, over 4,000 kilos, but it is significant that she's losing weight. That's it, pop it. Hop off. It's a real concern for us because it's not something you should expect to see at this point in the pregnancy. We are starting to worry a bit more about her now um, and what's going on. To see if there's a problem with the calf, they call in the vet team. Hey, girl, darling. How are we doing? So one thing we've not really tried really is to uh, actually perform an ultrasound, which would give us an indication whether, you know, the calf is still alive. It's not that easy to do. Elephant's got very thick skin, basically, so to try and get through that and see what's inside is quite difficult. But we're going to give it a go. You know, we want to try and, and try anything at this stage. Press as hard as you can. Can I ask you to try something? Try to get inside one of those um, wrinkles. It's proving difficult for the vets to get a clear image, and they haven't been able to locate the calf's heartbeat. You need to press harder. That looks like something. OK, stop there, stop moving for a minute. Don't move at all, yeah? See, I think this is still GI below the muscle, so I don't think we're picking up uterus here. So that's a vessel. You can see the flashing. We've got an artery and a vein there. The vets can only find Ty's blood vessels and are struggling to get an image of the calf. Anything? Not seeing anything. I think we can leave it for now, if you're okay, yeah? With no clear indication the baby is alive, the keepers fear the worst. I think me and, and the rest of the team are all kind of trying to keep a positive attitude and hope that we're still going to get a calf out of it. But the longer it goes on, the more chance we're not going to have a live calf born, which is a very tough thing for us to accept. We always knew that this was going to be Ty's last calf. It was a decision we made a long time ago with the vets and the elephant team. You kind of you know, set yourself up for this 22-month journey, and at the end of it, you kind of expect to have this great big event um, and a new addition to the family. So it's, it's even more sad that something's gone wrong. We're all still pretty gutted about it. Today is three months since Ty's due date. There are few known examples of an elephant ever giving birth to a live calf so late. But now Ty faces a new ordeal. If something goes wrong during the pregnancy, the animal actually passes a dead calf as a stillborn. Elephants can also do something else, though. It's a bit strange. They actually reabsorb the fetus. So Ty's biology will be saying, OK, I'm going to reabsorb you know, take back some of the, the nutrients from this fetus inside me. What she can't reabsorb, because obviously there's going to be some, you know, substantially large bits inside her, she'll actually mummify those bits off so there's no risk of infection. And then at a later date, she'll actually pass these bits out, which, would, which you know, would be a bit, of, a bit of a grim day. That night, after keepers have left for the day, the cameras begin picking up unusual activity in the elephant house. Ty is restless. Ty's youngest daughter, Nandita, approaches her mother. and the rest of the Highway family gather around her. Only when the keepers arrive in the morning will they discover what's happened overnight. Overnight, there has been a dramatic development in the elephant house. The keepers have arrived and are trying to make sense of a situation never seen before in Chester's long history. 
so we, we came into work as, as any other day. The first thing we do in the morning is we, we go into the house um, and we drop one of the hay nets for the elephants. But today, we drop the net and um, no one's coming over, so it's, which is a bit strange. Usually, you know, sometimes you get one or two that are off doing their own thing, but for, for the whole herd to be not interested in food is a very strange thing to happen. So then on, on closer inspection, you can see that they're all kind of glued together. And they do sometimes have a little panics and they all kind of group together, so thought, oh, maybe something's, something's spooked them or something's upset them. So just doing the head count, checking all the elephants. And it's a, a kind of a real double take moment. You know, you've got Nandita and you've got two other calves, and then all of a sudden, there's a new arrival. Right in the middle of everything, this little tiny calf. I had given birth overnight, um, which was just such a shock. Yeah.